Thank you, Professor Nordquist, for your kind introduction and the faith that you and John Norton Moore have shown in asking the Stockton Center for International Law to continue the legacy of the annual conference on Oceans Law and Policy, or CULP. The Stockton Center and its faculty have been associated with the University of Virginia Law School since 1993, and we've participated in CULP since 1997. So we're honored to be able to carry out and carry on the work of the greatest conference on oceans law and policy in the world. CULP was founded and led for more than four decades by John Norton Moore and Myra Nordquist. And these individuals participated in the negotiation for the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Moore was a US, <clears throat> pardon me, was a US ambassador in the negotiations and he founded CULP in 1976. In addition to the annual conference volume, the Oceans Program at Virginia published the article by article definitive analysis of UNCLOS, the seven volume Virginia commentary. The project was funded by over $1 million in grants and was uniquely international in that it involved many of the leading Law of the Sea negotiators at the third UN conference from 51 countries, preparing a detailed, comprehensive, authoritative analysis of one of the most important agreements in history. The commentary analyzes the 320 articles and nine annexes of UNCLOS, as well as the subsequent implementing agreements on part 11 for deep seabed mining and on straddling and highly migratory fish stocks. The commentary has been cited in a number of judgments issued by prominent international courts and tribunals, such as the International Court of Justice and the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. The commentaries have been viewed as authoritative in at least nine major international Law of the Sea related disputes, including the motor vessel Sayaga case, 1998, the Southern Bluefin Tuna case, 1999, the Mox Plant case in 2001, and the 2013 whaling in Antarctica case. John Norton Moore is a mentor for everyone who has worked on or studies the law of the sea in a meaningful way within the US government and indeed in global academia over the past 45 years. And if we succeed at the Stockton Center in continuing this legacy, it will only be because we stand on his tall shoulders. Likewise, Myron, as Associate Director of CULP, has led the organization of the annual conference and production of the uh, conference volume of papers. And I'm pleased to say that he will continue in that role as a distinguished fellow in the Stockton Center, supported by Judy Ellis. The stature of the CULT program is demonstrated by the prestigious Law of the Sea organizations that have joined in this effort in the past. The annual conference has been co-hosted with the Food and Agricultural Organization in Rome, the International Seabed Authority in Jamaica, the International Maritime Organization in London, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in Hamburg, the Foreign Ministry of Indonesia, and for its 40th meeting, the center teamed in an unprecedented event with the United Nations Division for Ocean Affairs and Law of the Sea at the UN headquarters in New York. The conference has also been held in Beijing in 2018 in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China. 
The 2019 conference was co-sponsored by World Maritime University and the Nippon Foundation, and it explored marine biodiversity beyond areas of nat national jurisdiction in light of the efforts to draft a new implementing agreement for UNCLOS. This year's conference was scheduled originally for 2020, but as the pandemic has required us to shift it, and Myron has said that it was postponed until now. We are honored for this 2021 conference to be co-hosted with the Japan Institute of International Affairs, the Sasakawa Peace Foundation, World Maritime University, and the Ocean Policy Research Foundation. We're also pleased to continue enduring partnerships with leading centers of thought throughout the world in this endeavor, including World Maritime University, the Korea Maritime Institute, and then joining this year with our co-hosts in Tokyo. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan has been a global leader in progressive development of oceans, law, and policy in numerous diplomatic engagements, promoting sensible solutions to political, economic, and military uses of the sea that build security and stability in East Asia and throughout the world. Meanwhile, no organization has done more than the Sasakawa Peace Foundation and Nippon Foundation to develop capacity and support creative multilateral approaches to oceans law and policy that are mutually beneficial and deepen expertise and commitment to the rule of law. So it's a special honor to join with our Japan co-sponsors this year. The Stockton Center has a long commitment to the rule of law in the oceans as well. When the US Naval War College was established in the late 19th century, general order number one directed that there would be two courses of study at the War College. First, the study of strategy, and second, the study of international law. These two subjects are intertwined to maintain peace and security. In 1895, the International Law Program at the Naval War College began publication of International Law Studies, ILS. ILS is the oldest journal of international law in the United States and ranked among the top 10 of international law journals in the world and number two in national security law. Today, the Stockton Center has judge advocate lawyers and military professors from all five of the US Armed Forces, including the Coast Guard. And we have co-hosted numerous scholars and officials from other institutions as visiting scholars, including from the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, the Korea Maritime Institute, the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom. The Stockton Center also is responsible for development and publication of the Commander's Handbook on the Law of Naval Operations, signed by the US Navy, U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. Marine Corps. This year, we are completing a major study on emerging technology and the law of the sea that will be published by Cambridge University Press in collaboration with the Korea Maritime Institute and World Maritime University. This study includes a dozen thought leaders uh, including Professor Ronan Long and Clive Schofield from World Maritime University and Dr. Young Kill Park from Korea Maritime Institute. We look forward to continuing the annual conference on oceans law and policy and production of the annual conference proceedings. We appreciate the strong legacy for that franchise that has prospered under the care of Judy Ellis, Judy Ellis and with the leadership of Myron Nordquist. This year will be the 45th volume of that series. We're honored to take the helm for CULP and to be successful 
we will rely on strong partnerships. We hope to revitalize and energize co-sponsor relationships with past supporters of CULP, and we seek to build new and continuing partnerships with organizations and institutions. Toward that end, we are in discussions with several law of the sea and oceans policy think tanks and organizations around the world to ensure that CULP has a healthy and enduring support going forward. We look forward to this year's conference, which like past events, spans the range of compelling issues in oceans law and policy, from consideration about baselines and archipelagic states, regional seas of special interest, including the East China Sea and the Sea of Japan, small island developing states, and the problems posed by plastics in the marine environment, and how we can finally more effectively address climate change. Thank you for participating in this year's conference. And we hope that while it is virtual, that it will still be engaging and informative. We hope that you will remain with us this year as well as in 2022 and beyond. And we hope that those events will be in person and we intend to conduct uh, the 2022 conference in another feature city. Although we are in discussions for a venue, if you have ideas or locations uh, or ideas for partnerships for 2022 and beyond, we welcome the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>